What's up everybody? Welcome back to Idiot Proof Cooking. So today I'm going to be making more smash burgers. Now the last time I did that, I forgot to toast my buns. And I'll admit, that was a rookie maneuver. Don't make a burger without toasting your buns. So today I'm going to be doing that, but I'm going to take it just a little step further. What I'm actually going to do is make grilled cheese buns and put the burger in between them. I'm calling it the double grilled cheeseburger. I don't know if there's another name for it out there. If it is, leave a comment, let me know. But I really like the ring of double grilled cheeseburger. So without any further ado, let's get into it and make these burgs. This week I went to the butcher and got some ground chuck instead of grinding my own meat. Now I know I said in a previous episode, grind your own meat, and I still do stand by that, but in a pinch, ground chuck will work. Just make sure you get an 80-20 mix, 80% beef to 20% fat, because the fat will be what gives it the flavor. Now I'm making these into four ounce balls because I wanted to have a little bit of a bigger patty this week. And the, the ground chuck was double ground by the butcher shop previously, so it is very easy to pack tightly. I'm making a couple extra so that I can cook some burgers off screen afterwards. So now I have four nicely sized uh, hamburger balls ready to be smashed into patties, all weighing in and around four ounces. Let's talk about the grilled cheeses now that the uh, hamburger patties have been taken care of. So I'm using just plain white bread to make these grilled cheeses. You can use something fancy if you want, but I was looking more for real estate to put more cheese on rather than, you know, like a fancy tasting bread. What I'm going to be doing is using mayonnaise rather than butter to make these grilled cheeses. Now I know that sounds crazy because, you know, just standard convention is use butter to make a grilled cheese. But honestly, mayonnaise will give you a way, way better grilled cheese. It has a higher smoke point than butter does. So with butter, when you're making a grilled cheese, if you leave it on too long, it can burn. However, with mayonnaise, it can stay on longer, allowing the outside to crisp up better, allowing the cheese more time to melt while still staying soft on the inside. I can't recommend it enough. Use mayonnaise and try it to make a grilled cheese. It'll work out really well and doesn't leave residual mayonnaise taste. Now into the kitchen to start smashing down these burgers. So to make the smash burgers, you can either use a cast iron pan or a cast iron flat top like I have. So start off with the grilled cheese in a separate pan because that will take longer to cook than the smash burgers. As you can see, I'm using American cheese. In my opinion, it's the only thing to make a grilled cheese with. Start laying down some oil onto the skillet in order to smash the burgers down. What I do is I will then use my spatula to move the oil around a little bit, spread it out on the, uh, the flat, uh, flat top a little bit. Also to get a little bit of oil on the back of the spatula so that it doesn't stick to the burgers. Pretty straightforward from here. Slam some beef down onto the flat top and start smashing it down. Now I'm using parchment paper as an added layer so that the spatula doesn't stick to it. Honestly, you don't have to do that. Just be careful with the spatula taking it off. Slide it off of the burger rather than lifting it off. But if you have parchment paper, it just makes, makes your life way easier. After you're done smashing both burgers down, sprinkle a little kosher salt and black pepper on both burgers for taste, and just let it cook. Once you smash them down, it doesn't take long to cook them at all, only a couple of minutes. I think that's why smash burgers were invented in the first place, to get them done real quick. So after a couple of minutes, flip them over, first patty flip. Oh yeah, look at the color on that thing, that looks great. Second patty flip. Ooh, a little flame there. And holy shit, way bigger flame, trying to burn the house down apparently will. Alright, didn't burn the place down. Add your American cheese on top of the burgers. Now as soon as you flip, you know, fire notwithstanding, throw the cheese on because it does not take long to cook that other side. You cook it mostly through on the first side and then the second side is a quick flip, add the cheese. After your cheese is melted, use your scraper to scrape the burgers off and get some of that nice crust underneath it. As well, that's the whole point of using a scraper. You want to pull the crust off along with it. All right, so let's start assembling these burgers. Look at those grilled cheeses. They are pristine. It's the power of mayo. Like I said, try it out for your next grilled cheese. You won't regret it. So I figured why the hell not? We're making this cheesy. So let's add cheese on top of the grilled cheeses and then throw the cheeseburgers on top of the cheese. Not really going for healthy here anyway. So for toppings, I'm just going to use a little bit of Japanese mayo and some ketchup. Now I think I've told you before, if your grocery store carries Japanese mayo, buy it. It is way better than regular mayo. Like way better. Buy Japanese mayo, seriously. So after the toppings go on, throw the top bun on top, press it together, and 
my god, look at this thing. It is spectacular. Two cheeseburgers in between two grilled cheeses. The patties are four ounces each, or in other words, half a pound of beef. Uh, just saying that out loud kind of kind of makes me rethink this a little bit, but let's give her a cut and uh, we'll take a look at the cross section here. So as you can see, the patties are nice and done and there was literally a ton of cheese on this thing. First bite, it is, it is something else. It is fantastic, just cheesy and rich, my God. On a side note, does anybody have a number for a good cardiologist? The amount of American cheese in this thing was insane and with a half a pound of beef, but it was really, really tasty. Definitely give it a try. But anyways, that's the end of the episode. If you like what you saw here, maybe leave a comment, like the video, or subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching Idiot Proof Cooking. We'll see you again soon.